into certain things. I am an investigator. So one of the things I've done is I've already started to look at our budget. For example, I bet nobody in the room knows this, but you find some very interesting things. Do you know every year, the county, every county legislator has the availability to give $1,750 to any American Legion Hall in their community so that they can hold a Memorial Day picnic? Yeah. Lovely idea. Have total respect for it. Please, I'm a veteran. I'm a member of the American Legion, but we're in some tough times. Things like that need to go by the wayside immediately. They also, another thing that I have learned is we are the smallest geographic legislate, uh, county there is. Our legislative salaries are the second highest in New York State. And that doesn't mean that the legislators are overpaid. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all the staff and all the support. The second highest legislative staff salaries in the state of New York for geographically the smallest county in the state. I, I would say there's some fiscal mismanagement there. Another thing, we need to bring revenue streams in line. If the sales tax is going to be X, we need to call it X. Not X times three and pray to God something miraculous happens and we have this amazing sale at the mall and we pick up all the sales tax. That's disingenuous to our budget plan. It's not reality. And then another question that was asked also, being that I've done some investigations in my time, we do have a major problem with unfunded state mandates, Medicaid, Medicare being one of the largest ones there is. And I guarantee you, there is tons of fraud out there that we need to stop. We need to, as the legislative body, as I feel the chairwoman of the legislature should have done by now, put forth a mandate through our investigative powers and subpoena powers to demand that we start investigating this. We can probably create an investigative unit that would be self-paying and turn a profit in the fact of all the money it saves by investigating Medicaid and Medicare fraud. I also agree with what Mr. Carey said. We need to reach out through Mr. Zembrowski and Mr. Carlucci, and we need to find relief from the state. And speaking on that matter, I know several months ago in the newspaper there was an article, first that we were owed $77 million by the state, then we were only owed $44 million, then it was $44 million was only put in for. I, as a member of the legislature, if I'm elected, will never allow something like that to happen. I could never run a business in that fashion. And that's what the government is. At the end of the day, it's running a public sector business. And so we need to have full accounting of things like that. We need to understand, does the government, does the state government owe us $44 million? Does it owe us 77? Did we only put in for 44? I don't understand why this has not already been answered. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Um, at the last legislative meeting, that figure was brought down supposedly to $28 million because they had just gotten a like that particular day. The thing that I really think the legislators should zero in That's on is Medicaid fraud. Well. When you have people having children where they don't put the father's name on the birth certificate and they're having five and six and seven and eight children, we're paying for each one of those child, children the minute they're born, they go on Social Security and the mother gets an extra paycheck. That is one of the biggest rip-offs in this county. And that's something, but because of the uh, vote, they won't zero in on it. And that, to me, is something the legislative body should go after. But they're all afraid to touch it. How would you deal with that? I've been to war. I don't think there's anything in Rockland County that scares me. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how else to answer you. I'm a, man who stand, a you. I, I, I'm a man who stands on my own. Okay. I'm a man of my own principles. I have my beliefs. I follow my beliefs. But you're one person. Well, you know what? Again, I'm looking around the room. I'm not the only person in this room who feels that way. Right. I'm not the only person in my neighborhood who feels that way. And if I'm fortunate enough, there'll be about three, 4,000 other people on November 8th who feel that way, and I'll find myself legislator-elect, and then we'll take care of business. I mean, you, you know, Marge, you made a statement. I agree with you. But that's the reality. I can do what I can do. I guarantee you I will be a loud and vocal advocate for fixing this county because, as I said earlier, and you've heard me say this before, I'm 50 years old. I've had a, a very lovely run. I hope to have 30, 40 more years on the face of this earth. But my life, pretty much, I know what direction my life is going in. I have a 9-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a 13-year-old, and they 
they have friends, and my nieces and my nephews are what I am concerned about. It's not about me. It's about the legacy I leave for my children. I made a decision to have children. I want them to have every opportunity I have. As I like to say, my mother, I never listened to a thing the woman said except for one thing, and it's kind of funny. Well, no, I never listened to that either. Well, my mother many years ago said to me, you can do anything you want, you can be anybody you want to be if you work hard enough, and you use the opportunities given to you. As I said before, I'm concerned. And my real concern is, is that we're squandering my children, your children, your grandchildren's opportunities because of our irresponsibility in government. I hope that answered you in a very long way. That was very good. Thank you very much.